Hello, my name is Jose Barriga and welcome to the next uh, video in the conversion of a uh, Sentra to an electric car. Uh, I want to apologize for not uploading a video in so long because I was really, really trying to have this moving on the next video, but several things happened that didn't let me have it working uh, until this time. The first thing that happened is that the, the uh, transmission was still leaking and I had to remove the shaft and the wheel and then redo the seal uh, because it was still leaking oil something I did wrong but looks like this time is fine it doesn't it's not leaking oil anymore the second thing that I have to redo is uh, move this uh, support to the back because it was even though it was the right size it, it is inclined so it was um, it was um, doing this on the controller so I had to move it to the back so that there's some space and at the same time that I removed this then I decided to install the uh, water cooling connections for a future water cooling system so at least I got that done. Uh, the third thing I had to have redone is to I had to remove the controller and take it to warranty. The reason why the RPMs were not measuring is because the controller was uh, disconnected internally the, the cable was not working and against my own advice uh, I did my what I told you not to do and I bought this controller much um, sooner than I should have and the warranty expired while I didn't even start using it uh, so the, the guys of Fnetics were really nice to still give me warranty but the official warranty expired but they did fix it even though the warranty expired but it, it was bad from the beginning I never had a chance to use it it was bad from the beginning and now it's working fine I had a chance to review the RPMs meter and it's working fine uh, also I had to replace the DC to DC controller and the reason why is because the controller that I had before was a controller for AC uh, they sold me an AC to DC controller and I wanted a DC to DC controller so I had to buy it again uh, if you notice I, I put some rubber in, in between this so for to uh, avoid vibration and there's some rubber under this just to try to uh, eliminate some vibration which affects electronics um, what else oh, I installed the cables I installed in every battery I have a connection I have a terminal here so I can just check very easily the, the voltage in every battery I can just come and check positive and negative in each battery for, that's for easy measuring and balancing if I need to and, and I put a fuse in each one of these uh, to avoid any possible uh, short circuit damage if there is one um, what else? So with this in mind, I think that the front part is finally finished. Um, the wheels are not too low. If you, if you see, it looks like a car that has been uh, just made sport. So it's not too bad. I, I'm not sure at this point if I ever need to change the springs. I'm thinking that it's going to look like a sport car, and it's, I probably don't need to have uh, any stone of the springs. Also, what I want to show you is the, 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 the dashboard, the gouges. Um, from this, um, I, haven't even, I haven't been able to fix the uh, speedometer or the RPM meter, uh, but I'm working on that. Uh, what I'm trying to do right now is just to use the uh, check engine light to connect it to the controller now because it gives some error signals in there. But what I learned now is that um, to save on cables, the way these things work now is that the main computer of the engine and the car is sending now through a serial cable a bunch of information that this chip is processing and is passing to the lights and to the RPMs and to the meters so it's not easy to intercept any more single signals for example the check engine I cannot really find a cable with the check engine light because there is not a check engine like cable everything is coming through a couple of cables called CAN computer assisted network or something like that uh, it's really it's encoded serial information so there's not a cable that you can use uh, so I'm going to have to literally install the LED into that place to use it um, that's true also for the speedometer and for the RPM meters and those, that's probably with the newer cars conversions they're not, there's not a cable to hack anymore 
this is a serial cable which encoded signal that is transferred to this chip. It's not it's not that easy to intercept cables anymore with the new hardware. You know, I'm still working on that. Um, something else that I think is the is the, is the uh, gadgets for volts and first and the volts for the uh, accessories battery. So I'm going to show you what I did in the dashboard. That's pretty much uh, done. Since I didn't have much space in my um, since I didn't have much space in my uh, dashboard, this is what I did. Uh, as you can see, it's working now. Uh, I'm going to turn on the switch. So you can see that my voltmeter is mirroring, is it, is working there. Um, the amp meter, and we step on the oscillator a little. So the ampere meter is measuring now, and I have a also a a, a gauge for my uh, accessories batteries. So it's working there as well. So I have my three main indicators for the car right there working and ready now uh, I'm going to show you the progress I've made in the back that, the, the last thing I'm working on to be ready to, uh, to be ready to uh, um, have the car ready to be moved out is um, battery cages here in the back so as you can see I start installing the uh, metal I still need to reinforce it a little, but uh, it's way on, on, on progress. I have the, the, the rest for the first bank, the second bank. I still need a third bank, and two more batteries over here, and the charger on the top. That's that's the way this is going to go. Okay, um, I'm going to um, now do the next video once the car is moving. I'm very close to just having these batteries in the back and then start moving the car. Uh, until then, thank you for watching. Bye.